in the house tonight. Let's give him our best as we get going here tonight. Praise his name. Hallelujah. How awesome he is. And we're glad to be with you tonight in the house. Amen. Amen. We just sang a song before we got started. Satan is under our feet in Jesus' name. We have victory in the house tonight. Let's sing like it and worship by you. Stay tuned. i got a message to share. It's really on my heart. We're going to worship God. Let's give him glory. If you're welcome to stand, if you're able, let's give the Lord glory. We're going to fly. I don't care when it is. As long as I'm going, morning, noon, night, we're leaving this place. We're going to our, we're going to be with Jesus. We won't have to worry about anything else anymore. Nothing. We're just going to worship and praise at his feet forever. That should excite everybody here. We have nothing we have to do with in this world anymore. We'll be with our Lord, and it'll be awesome. So, if you're not in the Glory Land way, you can get there tonight. Amen.
I've heard a saying before, I'm in the way. And I always want to tell him, get out of the way and let God do what he wants. Stay out of God's way and let him do what needs to be done. Amen. Let's get in the heart of worship tonight. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Shout to the Lord tonight. Let's shout the roof off of this place tonight for our Lord tonight. Amen. Glory to God. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord.
work of heart. Yes. It's not a work of mouth. It's not a work of mind. It's a work of heart. Yes. Let's sing it to him, to him yes. from our hearts. Yes. Not to each other. Not, yes. not to anyone else. Let's sing it to him and show him how much we love him from our hearts. This is our love song to him.
Yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Could you bless him with your yes, lips tonight? Yes. Oh, give him the glory with our mouths. He deserves Jesus. it. Hallelujah. Bless, your name bless Jesus. you, Jesus. Glorious is your name, Jesus. Oh, thank you for your presence. Yes, Lord. Oh, thank you for your presence. Glorious. Glorious. We exalt you, Jesus. Yes. We want to tell you how good you are, yes. Lord, for you are so good. You are so good. And Lord, may we with the, the very everything of who we are, inside and out, give you glory tonight. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. We are so blessed. Thank you for each one. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> I just want to say thank you, Lord, Yes. that no matter where we are, we are blessed. As your word says, it's in the city or in the country, dear God. Coming or going, we are blessed. And Lord, day or night, as your word says, we are blessed. And Lord, we just want to say thank you for that. That no matter what it looks like uh, on the outside, we are blessed. On the inside, and we give you glory. We give you praise. You are so good. You are so good, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Hmm. And just as Nehemiah and the people couldn't help but rejoice, and the sound was heard far away, they said, we rejoice tonight. And we, we many, will, when we leave this place, are going to hear about it, dear God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Could you make just a little bit of noise? I know it's good. Quiet. He is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We raise up the shout of this place tonight. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah is the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name. Holy is the Lord. How good you are, Jesus. We rejoice, dear yes, God, Lord, in what yes. you're doing and what you've done. Hallelujah. <coughs> thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Isn't he good? Yes. Ooh, thank Amen. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. And I lift my gave you this music tonight he just gave me worship music we put other stuff with it so he said tonight worship and praise me church mm. worship and praise me church mm. 
That's what he wants. I think it goes a step beyond that because I told Alan's mom just a second ago, I said, when you sing, I love you, Lord, because it's been on my mind. There's times we all, as human beings, go through a period where nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody loves me. Yeah. Nobody even calls to check on me. Mm. Nobody even knows my name if I wasn't around, you know. The only thing they would miss was me cooking dinner every night. Mm. We've all been there. We've all felt that. How many times a day do we make our father feel that? That's it's right. true. So I think tonight we just need to love on him. Yes. We just mm -hmm. need to show him we love him. Yeah. Because he misses that from us just as much as we miss it from everybody else as a human. Yes. Yes. I think we just need to love on him yes. tonight. Yes. And we do love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Oh, and build that love up in us more. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Bless it. And Lord, we love you because you first loved us. We love you. You showed us that love on the cross. You showed us that love every day. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, worship team. Do we have any specials tonight? Praise his name. It's good to spend some time in his presence and see, see what he will do. That's why we have sometimes those extended times like that. It's just to spend some time with him and let him speak to us what no one else ever could. We did want to remind us of just a few things before we dig in. If you could throw those up here. We hope you can be back with us or tune in uh, Wednesday night. We're going to have an awesome time here. Uh, it's good to see everybody tonight. If you can make it Wednesday night, it's going to be a special time of prayer. Uh, at the end of the month, we've been praying for our church in the month of July, and we're looking forward to what God's going to do on Wednesday. So if you have an opportunity, we would love to have you back with us or to tune in also if you can't be here with us. He does amazing things. Seek his face, he says, and, and we, will, we will see it. So let's seek him. Spend some time Wednesday night. Uh, then Friday and Saturday is our VBS. So we praise God for that. And we're hoping and encouraging everybody to be here. We have stuff for adults too. So don't think if you're uh, just, uh, it's not just for the young folks. It's for, it's for all of us. And we're all going to participate and help in different ways. And so we look forward to that. It'll be 530 to 8, uh, the second and the third. We will have food here both nights. Uh, is there anything else I need to say, Sister? We said to bring in the Little Debbie snack cakes. If you had the little snack cakes to bring those in, we had some come in tonight. We appreciate it. So we, we look forward to 
Yeah, so praise God. I have several to come in. Praise God. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, he wants the oatmeal. Brother Gary wants the oatmeal. So. Swiss, oh, Swiss rolls, okay. Okay. So, yeah, we've got some good stuff coming, so looking forward to it. And um, one thing I'll mention, uh, a week from tonight, unless the Lord really leads me otherwise and the Lord takes a different direction with prayer, we probably won't be here because of the VBS, and I don't want to get us too too exhausted with that on, on a Sunday, this Sunday night. So um, if we change that, we'll let you know, but right now we'll probably go ahead and not have service Sunday night uh, for us. And But we will have service the following Sunday evening, and we're going to have our brother share. So he's a, who could that be? Our brother Al. Our brother Al. So... So he's got a got a word for us coming up here in a couple of weeks, a week, two weeks from tonight. So, all right, and our discipleship August 9th, which I believe would be the Friday before that, will be our discipleship at seven. First Timothy four through six is that what it is? So be studying up on that. Should be it'll be a wonderful time of fellowship and learning. Uh oh. Uh oh. So that means y'all better study. Y'all better be ready. Better have it down. You got to earn your supper. All right. That's right. He's a good God, and we have an awesome time in the house. And he is, as we said, he's a loving God. He shows his love in different ways. Even if you're not feeling it tonight, he still loves you anyway. All right. We're digging in a little bit more in the book of Nehemiah. Our brother shared. Uh, this morning on Nehemiah. We're going to be talking a little bit in something in Nehemiah you might not look at as much, but if you don't know those out there, Nehemiah is the subject of our VBS. I haven't picked out my jacket tonight. It has like little walls all over it here. So that's that's uh, the idea. We're trying to focus us in there. And so we're in the book of Nehemiah 3, so if you have the ability to turn there, that would be great. This is actually one of the things, you might not, see, give me just a second before you stand, give me just a second, <laughs> unless you just need some exercise and need to, yeah, that, that's, that's good too, but one of the things that we have a lot of in the Bible are lists, there's a lot of lists in the Bible, Nehemiah has several lists, if you're not careful, you look at the lists and say, oh, I don't know about that, but you know what, it's in there for a reason, and I encourage us to study, we're going to teach you a little bit on a list tonight. And somebody's already warned me not to, to put him to sleep. So I'm going to work real hard here, brother, so I don't put you to sleep. So, yeah, I'm, I'm teasing. I'm, we talked earlier about that. But we're going to work hard because there is something precious for us in all the Scripture and in all of Nehemiah. And so, and by the way, I'm teaching the adults on uh, Friday night, and so we're looking forward to that. But I wanted to have something to bring into us before that. And I call this wall work and worship. Wall work and worship. So we talked a little bit about the the wall being built up, and I want to talk a little bit about the work process part of the wall here, because I, I do want to say this to us, your hard work for him matters. I want to say it, hard work for Jesus matters, and you can go ahead and stand up now if you want to. Now we can get you, get us up here, get us going. So this is when the work has actually begun. Nehemiah built the wall is what we say, but Nehemiah didn't build the wall by himself. Did you know that? He had to have help. There had to be people come alongside and work too. And this, is, this chapter is the list of everybody that came and helped. And you say, oh, a list. But I tell you what, there's some awesome stuff we can dig out here. Because he doesn't have a plan just for the people that seem like they're up front. He has a plan and a purpose for everybody. There's a plan for you and me, uh, whoever we are, to do his work. And I want to stress that to us tonight. And we're going to look at just a few people that God used for that plan. And this is in the first verse of this chapter, and then we will stop and pray. Then Elishab, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and built the sheep gate, and consecrated it, and hung its doors. They built as far as the tower of the hundred, and consecrated it, and as far as the tower of Hananel. And Father, we thank you that you, dear God, have been working for us since the beginning of time. And Lord, we just thank you for the, the beauty of your word that you have provided for us. And we ask that you use this word for everything you'd accomplish through it tonight for your glory and that we might take it out and work for somebody that doesn't know you. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to say to us, this church has good workers in it. We appreciate everybody that helps all the ministry. I hope you all can say amen. There's good, there's good work. 
that's been done and been going on in this church. But it's very easy for us, if we're not careful, to get weary in well-doing. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? This is something as I was getting ready for this that really was on my heart. You can do everything in the perfect center of God's will. Can you put up that verse in Hebrews, brother? It's way down the list, but I want to bring it up. I'm going to promote this verse here. You can do everything just right, and you can still hurt. Did you know that? You can still be in pain. You can still go through some things in the perfect center of God's will. And it can be hard sometimes to want to keep the work going. And this is what he says, though. For you have need of endurance, so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Oh, and it's a good promise, you all. We can stop here and preach here. The promises of God, if you look in this book, are blessed and they are wonderful. And if we work and we hang in there, we're going to see all of them, I believe. They're not for somebody else. They're not for yesterday. They are for you today. There's promises for those who are willing to step up and do His will. And I encourage us that we don't take a step back and say, oh, I, I just can't do it today. Uh, we had a testimony for those that are online. By the way, Opal, Sister Opal, I'm interrupting myself and forgive me. The, the, our sister who almost watches every service, she said she had a testimony. Her, her feet were healed, and she can see her feet for the first time in two years. So, Sister, if you're, well, I hope you're watching tonight. We love you, and we celebrate with you what God is doing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He heals. We receive, we receive the promises when we ask Him. We come to Him. And I, I wanted to say this. We had a testimony tonight of, uh, from our sister, Sister Donna, how the Lord worked through a, a mysterious Brother Ross. And Brother Ross is a, a, a good fellow, sounds like anyway, but Brother Ross could have said, I'm tired of doing this. I don't want to do this today. I don't want to scatter any more seed today. It may be that last seed that you don't want to put out that God will use for the biggest Biggest tree in the whole garden. Can I, can I understand? We've got to keep spreading our seed. We've got to keep going to doing what he's called us to do. Because you have a good seed if it's that gospel in us. We need to keep spreading that out and not get weary in well-doing. Because there is a promise for us. Can we say that? Amen. Amen. Keep working. And so we, we have here, before I get way out, we have here um, some folks, some priests that are doing the work. And the reason I want to share about this tonight is we need encouragement. And I want to encourage us to hang in with what God has for us because the work, we need to keep on going. How should we work? We see it in this chapter, in this group of, in this group of people, in this list. We see it all here. And so in verse 1, the priests, even the high priest, the very high, big, biggest preacher of all in that group, he was, they were working on the wall first. It lists them first. They the one, they're the ones that step up and set the example and say, hey, let's work. Let's get to work here. we got something to do. God's ministers were willing to do the hard work. Amen? God. And, and I'll say this. We had some good examples set for us here. The pastor that preceded me here was named Roy Walls. He, he actually... Um, worked other jobs and ironically he did drywall and then after he did got done with the drywall he worked at walmart now go figure that brother walls drywall walmart how about that now i guess it's just the thing with him we're talking about walls right let's bring in the wall no but the reason i say that is sometimes we got to do the work even though you know we wish we could do something else we got to do the work that we need to do and god will take care of that he'll open up the doors because we are to set a good example to work and not get weary in, in doing so. And I believe the Lord will help us. As lead. And so my point is, for all those who are leaders, and I believe God has called up and raised up leaders, may we set an example of being willing to work hard in that thing that God has given us to do. And He will give us the ability. Sometimes it's not working harder, but working smarter. Does anybody know that? And so He will give us wisdom. Do you believe that? He will. He will give you and me wisdom as to know exactly what to do so that we're not working and working and working and it doesn't go anywhere. Because how many of us know that is pretty bad? It's pretty awful to see nothing happening and nothing working. He talked about today, and we're not reading this verse, you know, the fox uh, could get on the wall and cause it to fall. I put up some stuff that that probably could happen, right? Has anybody ever been frustrated by that? We need to, we need to do good work, but he'll help us. He'll help us, and the leaders are called to set the example first. And one other thing I'll say is be grateful for God's leaders who have worked hard and set the example. I talked about Brother Walls. We could talk about many others. You know leaders in your life that you've seen that they set a good example. They worked hard. They didn't hold back anything. 
Can you thank God for them tonight? Thank you, Lord, for those leaders that were willing to do that. Thank you, Lord, for those leaders. We wouldn't be here without them if it weren't for them. And I just encourage us, let's be grateful tonight for those leaders that step up and work. Amen. Well, let's keep going here. Verse 5. We've got several folks memorialized here in this passage. It talks about their, their kind of standing, uh, if you will, Group to group, kind of putting up the wall, doing all that, lifting those heavy stones our brother talked about this morning. If you're tuning in, uh, we're, we're talking about Nehemiah. Nehemiah needed to build the wall for Jerusalem. He needed to put it up so that the city would be protected, so they would have the, the guarding, that covering that they needed. But some weren't willing to work, it says. Next to them, the Tekoites made repairs, but their nobles did not put their shoulders to the work of their Lord, to the work of their Lord. How sad that is to be memorialized forever in Scripture that you didn't work. Mm, not, not, not cool. Not, not. And so, Lord, help us that we, to realize we're never too high up to work hard, no matter our background, our calling, our education, whatever we have, we are called to do that work. The, the first permanent English settlement in this country was called, anybody know? Oh, no, that was not the permanent one, though. Someone said Roanoke. Roanoke is not the... Jamestown. Okay, I knew my dad could jump in there somewhere. Jamestown was the first permanent English settlement in North America. And at Jamestown, the nobles wouldn't work. You know, the, you ever heard the story of John Smith and Pocahontas? Yeah, I've maybe ring some bells now. The folks wouldn't work because they were gentlemen. And gentlemen didn't actually plant and farm. They were just digging for gold. And how many know it's going to be a hard work in digging for gold in Virginia? There's not, there's not too much gold there. Sometimes we want to do what we want to do, but there's a work to be done that needs to be done. And, they, and what did John Smith say? You don't work, you don't eat. Yeah. You remember that? So there's, there's a lesson for us here. We've got to put our shoulders to the work. We've got to do it. If you literally translate that, it, talks, it actually refers to your neck. That's to called your neck. And, and I, I see it this way. I believe God's called some of us to stick our necks out because we may say, oh, I'm not trained to do that. I don't know how to do that. But somebody needs to stick their neck out and do something that needs to be done for Jesus. Something we're, talk, we're doing with VBS and working with kids. Somebody needs to stick their neck out for some kids that need some help and need some ministry. Somebody needs to stick their neck out for something that, that they're called to do that they, they wish they could have given up a long time ago. But he's saying, one more time, stick your neck out. Stick it out for me. And don't just resist doing the work. You know, one of the things that you ever heard, everything I learned, I need, to, I learned in kindergarten. You ever heard that? That was a, a saying sometime back. I could say everything I learned, I learned from the Three Stooges, and so that's that's just about her. I watch, I've seen a lot of Three Stooges. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm not serious. But I watched a lot of what's called the Three Stooges growing up, and they had an episode one time where the Three Stooges are being lazy, and their father says to them. Everybody has to do something. And you know what? My dad reminded me that, of that because uh, I told him, yeah, when I get out of school, I'm going to take some time off. And he said, everybody has to do something. The Three Stooges said it. And you know what? He's right. We all have to do something because we all can do something. We're all empowered to do something here. We can't say, oh, that's not for me. That's not to do. We are all called, each one of us, to something precious, something that's good. And I encourage us that we can't just give up and say it's for somebody else, as our brother said this morning. And so, Lord, help us to stick our neck out for him and to do what he's called us to do and not push it out on someone else. And so I reiterate what the brother said today. And, Lord, help us to have that. And sometimes, yes, we can't do jobs that are there. It's, just, it's too much. But I tell you what, we got a good church here. you got brothers and sisters that can help you if you're weary in the world doing and you may need to make a call to Mr. Ross, and that's okay. You may need to make a call to somebody else. It's okay. He'll help. We'll, help, we'll get the work and the help we need. Amen. All right. Let's keep going in our list here. Verse 13. Verse 13 of this list here. So we're going through all. They go section by section of the wall, all the people repairing it. Hanun and the inhabitants of Zenoa repaired the valley gate. They built it and hung its doors with the, bolt, the bolts and bars and repaired a thousand cubits of the wall as far as the refuse gate. I call it the, we call it the refuse gate is what we're looking at here. Uh, all right. And, at, and in verse 16, we're going to do juxtapose a little bit here. Verse 16. After him, Nehemiah, which seems to be a different Nehemiah, Nehemiah the son of Azbuk, leader of half the district of Bethzur, made repairs as far as the palace in front of the tombs of David. 
to the man-made poo as far as the house of the mighty. Amen. So I encourage us, sometimes we have to work in the dung gate. Did you know that? Sometimes you have to work in the restroom area, if you know what I'm saying here. It's going to be the, well, I'm a preacher and I want to respect the desk. But it's, you know what it is, it's, it's, it's dirty, it's messy, it's filthy, and we don't, have to, <laughs> we, don't, we don't even have to have too much imagination for it here. But I, I want to say sometimes you get to work in the house of the mighty. You get to work on the, hall, the house of the heroes, I think in some translations, or in front of David's tombs, which would have been you know, an important place for them to work in, in man's eyes. Do you, I hope you get where I'm getting at here. Sometimes you got to work in the dung gate. And sometimes you got to work in the uh, hall of the heroes, the house of the mighty. But it all pays the same, as somebody once says. It all matters. Amen. I got real quiet there. It really does, though. I promise you it does. Because he will bless it. If you got to do the, the, what seems to be the high or what seems to be the low, it all pays the same. And he's got good. And all, all the wall needed to be strong. The part in front of the dung gate needed to be strong, just like the part in front of the, the mighty place. It, you know, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And so I encourage us, God will reward the job you do. Even if another had the flashy job, the job you wanted, God will, will, will reward you for the job you do. Sometimes you got to do it. Some, and that's the lesson I've had to learn. You know, you get, you, you, you go where the open door is. And as I, I've tried to encourage folks, sometimes you have to bloom where you're planted, even if where you're planted isn't a pretty place. I had to, you all know my job, I work with trash, and sometimes I have to dig through trash to find out who dumped the trash there so I can take them. So I was up at Lake Malone, if you all know where that is, Lake Malone, and we, there was someone that dumped some trash out, so I'm, I'm reaching down in the ditch trying to make sure I don't fall. Lake Malone is really, if, you're, if you've ever been up there, it's got some, ooh, got some up and down up there. And so I'm digging in the trash, and I'm thinking all the time, oh, I wish I wasn't here. Oh, I wish I could get a hold of who did this. You ever, be, ever been there like that? But sometimes you got to just say, cool it, let's get this done. we got a job to do, and let's get this job done. And sometimes it's, it's, it feels like the dung gate. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But he, he still will bless it. And he helped me. He actually helped me to find who, who got that trash, who put that trash there, and do some community service for me. And so they did, they did have to get, get that taken care of. And, and I said that to say this, believe that every job is important. Believe that the job you have is important because it is, because it is. I, I, did, I just don't want us to take, take to heart that somehow that what we're doing is less. All right. All right. And I, I just, mm, thank you, Jesus. He's a good God. He's a good, I just want to stop and to say that here. Lord, help me to be grateful for what I've been given. I told them earlier, I've been here 11 years. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for the doors that he's opened and the doors that he's going to open. So be encouraged tonight that the work that you're doing here, it matters. Well, let's keep going here. I, I want to keep this going. It says in verse 20 here, After him, Baruch, the son of Zabai, carefully repaired the other section from the buttress of the door to the house of the house of Elishab the high priest. And what I wanted to look here is that one word, carefully. Carefully. That also can be translated as zealously. I tell you what, it's one thing to work, but it's another thing altogether to say, hey, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a careful, I'm gonna be diligent, I'm gonna be, what are those words? Meticulous, I'm gonna be zealous, I'm gonna put my all and all in that. That is an awesome memorial because you remember. Jesus said this about the Bible, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word is never going to pass away. And in that, and, and right there for that man right there, he is memorialized forever and ever. You'll see how awesome he worked. He did a zealous job. And that's pretty cool. But you know what? The book of Malachi, and I don't have this verse, Brother Gary, but I, I remind us, I encourage you to check it out. There's some folks in Malachi that were kind of worried, does anybody really pay attention to what I'm doing? And it says there, a scroll of remembrance was written for what they did. And so I want to say this. It's not just Baruch here that's remembered. You are. You are being remembered for the work that you do. Because when you do that work and you do it zealously, you do it with all you have, he remembers. He notices every bit that you do. And I, I, I do want to stress to us that it is, as we, we think it might be nothing sometimes. 
be, be encouraged that there's a memorial in heaven for you, for what you've done. And someday we're all going to see that and rejoice with you and how good you did your work. Look forward to it. Look forward to it. And so, Lord, help us. We need to have that zeal for that work. We need to have that careful work and not be slack in doing that because the Lord sees that too. He sees it. He sees it. And so don't let the situation or your life steal our passion for God's work. Many times the zeal is with the younger, but I, I've seen workers that are quite a bit older that they had a lot of zeal. Anybody ever know what I'm talking about? You saw somebody, they were on up in years, and woo, they were excited about what God was doing in, in them, and they were doing their job to the best they could. I've seen younger people that way. Let's have some zeal, y'all. And, and, and yes, we, we realize as we get older, sometimes we can get a little bit, what's the word, jaded, a little bit tired of it. Uh, it doesn't matter. Every bit of it matters. And when we take, a, take that step and say, Lord, I'm going to give you my best in this. Even though I don't like this, I don't like what they're doing, I don't like how this is going, but I know this is what you call me to. And you take that step and you do that. He sees that. He sees that, re that remembrance is there for all time for him and for all time for you and me. Hallelujah for that. Lord, help us to have that zeal and that knowledge that, that we, will, we will have that. Because you see, as you grow older, you get more knowledge. It actually could get better for you. You say, I can't do as much. Yeah, you can. We talk about working smarter. Amen. We talked to, I was talking with the brother back. Sometimes you got to work smarter, don't you, brother, to get stuff done and you get a little older. It, it ain't going to work. He gives us wisdom and he will, he will give us that zeal and that knowledge. When we put them together, woo, there's no telling what you can do. I would do this when I was a youth pastor, uh, putting together that zeal and knowledge. Anybody ever heard of the Diet Coke and Mentos? You may not know what I'm talking about. So when Diet Coke, I don't like Diet Coke, but anyway, some people really, really do. But you have it over here and put a drink in Mentos, kind of a mediocre candy mint type thing. They're kind of by themselves, they're not a whole lot. But there's a, there's a trick where if you open up a bottle of Diet Coke, uh, uh, preferably a plastic bottle, and you put Mentos in it, woo, it'll explode. And they say there's chemical processes that go through. And you can see the video. It's amazing what will happen when you put Diet Coke and Mentos together. I did it one time. I demonstrate. I, I, don't worry. I don't have a demonstration for us tonight. I did one time for the Korean ladies. And they just about passed out because it was going to, they were scared to death what was going to happen. I had to keep it with the youth. But because um, they, they all rushed to help. I think several of them rushed to clean it, you know, before, <laughs> before they reacted to what I was actually saying. But my point is to this. If you have that zeal and that willingness to work, it's like the Diet Coke and the Mentos. By themselves, it's not too much. But you put them together, woo, something happens. Does that make sense? And I believe that zeal and that knowledge can be yours. That can be yours. And you can see something amazing happen spiritually that it's going to explode and nothing's going to stop you for Jesus. I believe it. So I encourage us, will the work get done? Nehemiah 6, 15 and 16. Our brother read this. and yeah, You can run out and try the, Di the Diet Coke at Mentos, but maybe just don't try it right on our carpet right here. Okay. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> it works too. It's <laughs> It works. You just better do it outside. All right, 15 and 16. And our brother read this today. So the wall was finished on the, fifth, on the 25th day of Elul in 52 days. In verse 16, verse 16. We wonder, will the work ever get finished? Has anybody ever wondered that? I'm doing work, but it's never going to get done. Never going to get done. Verse 16, it happened when all our enemies heard of it and all the nations around us saw these things, that they were dis very disheartened in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was done by our God. Hallelujah. Nehemiah got the job done, and it was a witness that God was with them. So I want to say to us, will the work ever get done? Yes. Yes, it will get done. And not only will it get done, it's going to be a testimony to us and everybody out there that God did it. He's the one that's going to be doing it. So you, some of y'all have been given some jobs and wonder, is that ever going to come to pass and get done? Hang in there. Stay tuned. Hang in and stay patient with it because I believe it will, and we're going to give him all the glory for it, for the work that's coming and, and how God's going to use us. And I want to read a verse that was read today, but I want to read it again, go a little different direction. 1243. That's the beauty of the scriptures. We can go different directions and be the same verse, same thing. Nehemiah chapter 12 and verse 43. 
Also, that day, they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced. This is when the wall was finished. Talk about the work getting done. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. So the, the joy of Jerusalem was heard afar off. If you read back in the book of Ezra, Ezra and Nehemiah go together pretty well. About a hundred years prior, the same thing happened. They were building the temple and they heard, it was heard far away. It was heard far off. But a hundred years is a long time. And I believe there's some here that they've had that joy in the past, but it's been a long time coming. I want to say to us today, keep believing. He has a joy for us. Not, it's not just yesterday's news, y'all. He has joy for us coming up, and I believe for us very, very soon. And so I, my encouragement to us here with this is God will give us joy. And God will give us great joy, and it's going to be heard far away, even to a city, Russellville, and, and to a surrounding area that desperately needs to see some joy in their lives. Oh, can somebody rejoice with me? Hallelujah, you are good. He's a good God. Get excited for him and rejoice. Let it be heard what God is doing, because it's, it's a good work. And don't think it's just from the past. Because you see, there's all kinds of work to do. And Lord, help us. We talk, I won't get too much into this because our brother talked about it today, but we build up our walk with God so that we're different from the world. Amen? When you talk about building today, what are we building? Maybe physical, it may be literal, but a lot of times there's a spiritual component. You're building up yourself spiritually so that you're different. If you're no different than them out there, what's the point, right? But you are. You are. You're called to be different. And also, we want to be able to build up people so that that walk through these doors and let them know that God is real. I believe there's going to be some folks come in that have never been here before. Amen. There's going to be some folks come in and they need to be built up. You know that they need to be lifted up to Jesus and how are they going to be built up if we're not built up? And so we have to be built up in his, his whole, and our, again, our brother talked about it. Brother Roy, I mentioned brother Roy. He mentioned some things. I, I, it's hard to remember a big list, but if you can pray, read the Bible and go to church, it'll really help you. Three, Pray, read, that was his thing. Pray, read the Bible, and go to church. And I, uh, and I just encourage us, we need to stay up with what we're, we're called to do. If we do, then we're going to build them up that come through these doors because, oh, they need it. They need it, y'all. If we've ever, you know, we have the community Thanksgiving. We do some different things at our church, some different work. You know, the pumpkin pies, people, sometimes we, we do, they call us for the community Thanksgiving dinner here where we fix folks for the, folk, for the folks that need it. We'll fix a Thanksgiving meal. Sometimes it's been the pies. Sometimes it's been the mashed taters. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're mashing your taters and that's, that's what it is. Or green beans. There's more green. That was last year, wasn't it? Green beans. There's more green beans than anybody knows to, what to do with. But it, it matters. There, it's not just making green beans so the church smells like a big green bean pot for, for a few days. It matters. It matters. And if you do VBS, it's not just so that we have a fun time. It matters, y'all. The work you do matters. It actually is building up the kingdom. And God remembers what you do. And when we see God work, and we talked about the sister that testified of healing, I believe the Lord wants to send people so they'll be healed, so they'll be saved. So if, if there's something going wrong with them really spiritually, really wrong, they'll be delivered. And, and, and it's not just so we can say, oh, look at us and the good work we're doing. Because you see, Jesus is building his church. What did he say? I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. He's looking to build that up through us. And so I believe we're going to see some things we've seen and some things we haven't seen. And it all matters for a purpose. It's going to something good. All right. All right, let's wind this down. We'll call the, the musicians back up at this point. We'll maybe get the singers up in just a second. But Matthew 11, 28 through 30. You say to me, Nathan, I've, I, I feel you, but I'm just tired. Anybody ever heard? We talk about Brother Roy. Our sister Lois used to say, I'm tired. I'm tired. And sometimes you listen to a message like this and say, Nathan, I'm tired. Verse 28. Come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. In verse 30, would you read this with me? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Anybody ever had trouble getting sleep just because you had so much to do? There's just a lot of work to do. And I was on a trip one time with kids, and you know how it is with kids. You stay up late sometimes and get up early. And I had to, I was just so, 
burnt out, but I was in that hotel room with all those guys there with us. I'm, I'm seeing it as I'm telling you this. I asked the Lord, Lord, I can't do this. I got to drive. I had to drive the bus. You ever had to drive? They had to drive it. Ooh, it's hard. It's hard when you're tired to drive. And I had to drive all. We were in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. We're driving around Philadelphia. We stayed in a place called King of Prussia, which is uh, it's way out. You had to do a lot of driving to get to the downtown Philadelphia. But I said that for this. I was, I was really tired. But the Lord said, what he did is he gave me such a peace as I slept. I don't think I even slept that many hours, but I felt a rest in my soul because he was there. He was there, and he gave me the strength to go on and finish that trip. And I said that to say this. We may be tired, and physically we may have reached that point where we're, we can't go any further. But I want to say keep building, keep working, and say, Lord, I'm going to take your yoke. I'm not taking the yoke of anybody else but yours, and it's going to be light, and it's going to be good. Rest in him, y'all, and he will give you rest, and he'll build you up for the next thing he has for you. All right. And I encourage, this is, this sounds a little self-serving because we we're trying to get everybody for the VBS, right? Pump you up and get say, hey, let's do a good. But I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this. I believe there's a work to do out there. It's, it's it, yeah, in the flesh it looks hard, but we need to, we need to step up and do it. Don't back down back down. Let, God, let him direct it and keep going in it. I want to pray for us here. I do want to say this to anybody that needs to receive this tonight. As much as we say work is important, there's no work that you do that can save you. Can I say that again to anybody listening? There's not one work you can do to save you. Not anything. It has to be his work. The work of the cross. If there's anybody that needs Jesus and you're relying on your own work, you're going to fall short every time. But we believe that by grace you are saved and He wants to save and deliver you tonight wherever you are. And I want to encourage us, let's pray for anybody that needs, needs Jesus and needs to accept that grace tonight. Can you agree with me on that? And if you need to, this is a good night to do that. Accept Him. Invite Him in. Father, I want to pray. As they're singing to invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're invited to work. And anybody that's tried to do it on their own, they need your work, Lord Jesus. The work where you died and you rose again. Lord, raise them to life as they accept what you've done for them and be saved. That as our brother said today, they can admit and believe and confess and come to you. And Lord, you will change them. Not be, they won't be the same. Lord, I believe that for anyone that needs to receive it, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, save to the uttermost, we pray. Thank you for that work you've done for us. Hallelujah. And I want to pray for anyone out there and in here. Does anyone need direction? I do. Does anybody, can you just raise your hand? Lord, I need direction right now. I need direction. Anybody needs strength? Anybody needs strength? I need strength. I believe that we have a privilege tonight in, in the work that we have. We can ask God for it because He gives liberally without finding fault. Lord, I want to pray for anyone that raised their hands and maybe some that didn't that says, I need direction tonight. I need wisdom as to which way to go and how to work for you. I need to work smarter, dear God. Help us and show us what we need to know, Lord, we pray. And Lord, I pray for anyone that needs strength. The stones get heavy putting that wall up, Lord. But you say, come unto me, and I will give you rest. Give rest to those that need it, dear God. That when they lay down and get up, they will be so rested, they'll be ready for whatever comes. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give us that rest, and we trust you. Sing it if you know it. Come in the spring. I think we'll stop here as far as the camera goes. I encourage you, if the Lord's working in you, go to Him. Amen. Go to Him. Don't stop just because the camera stops. Go to Him. I believe somebody you need to be praying, you need to be talking to Him right now and not just go back about your business. Lord, I pray that they do it in Jesus' name. And Lord, we believe that you'll minister to whatever is needed for your glory. We love you and we'll see you soon at Christian Life. God bless you. God bless you.